Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use state-of-the-art neural networks that you would obtain through transfer learning, transfer them into your program, and not have to go through the training process, or even potentially just use this, this large neural network and retrain it from scratch to use just the structure. All right, this is the course material. This is in GitHub. There's a link in the description. Let me go ahead and open this in Colab so that everything displays a little better than GitHub is capable of. So transfer learning for computer vision. We'll go a bit further into transfer learning further in this course, but this is just showing you how you can take pre-trained state-of-the-art neural networks to let you be able to skip a lot of the training that you might have to deal with or the guesswork of trying to figure out what structure to use. I often get questions on that. How do you know how many neurons to do or how many filters or what the size of the filter should be or a variety of, of different things. You can transfer these already pre-trained neural networks that Google and the others have spent tons of compute time with trial and error and getting different sizes of neural networks. All, you can use known structures for neural networks and not have to create your own. Because it is very difficult. There is no magic answer where I just say, ah, yeah, the, the fourth hidden layer, that needs to be 91 neurons. Because typically making it 92 or not it doesn't make that big of a difference. The overall structure is, and you can make use of some predefined structures that are already there. So what I am going to do here is I'm going to download the weights for ImageNet, but in MobileNet. MobileNet is a very small neural network that was meant originally for mobile devices. Mobile devices have increased in their capabilities in the last couple of years, so you'll you'll see much bigger neural networks than this put into mobile devices, but that's that's its origins. How you make use of this is the mobile net class is defined in Keras and it simply maps. It, it goes to ImageNet and gets it. Include top. That becomes important. Those are the top layers that define the resolution. So if you're gonna change the resolution or the input into this neural network, then you wanna do include top as false. And we'll see examples of that here in just a moment in this video. But if you don't include the top and you change the resolution size, typically you have to retrain the entire neural network. You can't transfer the weights. So we print out the summary that just shows you the structure. So it's two, 224 by 224 by three. This is ImageNet. So there'll be a thousand at the very end. So yeah, 1,000. That is the number of classes that you are classifying into. So there's a thousand different image types that this neural network is aware of. Now we're going to download some data so that we can classify it. We're specifying the height and width. So we did not redefine the input layer. So everything that comes into this neural network for classification must be square and it must be 224 by 224. So we're going to use the same make square function that we had before. And we're going to call this to classify an image and put a URL. You can put any URL of any image you find on the internet here and it will attempt to classify it for you. So we're going to also resize it to the image height and width. We're going to then convert that into an array. And then we're going to basically process, pre-process it Whatever this mobile net is requiring, it's all built into the pre-processing step there that you're calling. It might well be nothing, but that's in Kira is how you define these for the, the pre-built neural networks. Then we're gonna call predict and we display the image and we print out argmax. So argmax is the numeric index uh, that we predicted. So if you try to classify the soccer ball, you're going to see the top choices for it. So it felt it was a soccer ball with 99%. It wasn't very sure, but the next thing down is a honeycomb, which I can kind of get. Now we're going to train one from scratch. So we're going to train one to calculate the paper clips, the number of paper clips in an image. It's going to count, so it's regression. Oh, and I need to fix this. The output from the predict race car somehow 
somehow ended up down down there. So we'll uh, we'll fix that. But when you download it, so you can see it was classifying pretty strongly that it was a race car. At any rate, we're going to count the paper clips. We download them, we unzip them, and then we put in this clips column that has the file name because it has an ID, which is the number, but ID say number five is in clips-5.jpg. We split it in training and testing data set, and we create the data generators. This is just like we've seen before in previous classes where putting a few transformers on there, not much. We're allowing it to be horizontally flipped, but not vertically flipped, just the way we're doing this one. And we're going to use ResNet 50, which is a big, large neural network. You can easily run it though. The in, But we're not pulling in the include top and we're not loading the weights. If you're gonna retrain, don't load the weights because the weights are already, would have very unusual distributions from whatever they were trained on before than the random weights, which would have a much more trainable distribution. Most likely it would still work, but just something to be aware of. Since we did not include the top, we have to, so we're not pulling the top. That's why we're putting this input sensor that is, has the height and width in three. So that's the new top. And then we go ahead and build it. And you can see that we put two 1024 ReLU dense layers at the bottom. Then we're going to train this. We import the early stopping so that we can stop when it no longer is improving to prevent overfitting. And if you look at the results, you can see it starts pretty high. Validation RMSE is 26. It gets lower, lower, lower. Uh, eventually overfitting becomes something of a problem and it stops at around 1.77 looks pretty good, 4.9. So it'll keep the, whichever of those rows generated the best weight. Okay, thank you for watching this video. And if you have any, all right, thank you for watching this video. And if you wanna to continue to follow along with the course, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if this video was helpful, please give me a like. Thank you very much.